Hello Golf Channel, my name is Derek Boyer. I'm from Windsor, Ontario, Canada. I'm a Canadian PGA member for 15 years. Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about getting the natural golf swing out of every golfer that we can get. Now I come from Canada, so I'm gonna use a hockey stick. I'm gonna use a bouncing racket and I'm gonna use a baseball bat. And what I show every athlete is, and every golfer, because I call every golf, golfer an athlete, is that the primary contact that they have to the club is their hands. As a baseball pitcher has a connection to the ball, his body reacts to what his hand wants to do during the throw. Now for me, the most important position in golf is impact. Now we're assume, assuming that you have the right grip, the right ball position, the right stance, and understand the basic fundamentals of making contact with the golf ball. And we go through over that every, in every lesson that we have here. But when I grab a bounce bracket and I move it, I want my arm, my hand, and my body to react to the motion that it's creating and not trying to create something that's unnatural. For example, I have the bouncing racket. If I were to take a backhand with it, I would move it this way. So here's a baseball bat, I'm getting ready to play, and it coming in and I hit it. And bang. And then for my Canadian golfers is a slap shot. Now the only again I understand that we have separation with our hands. But the motion and the timing of the hit is almost identical. Okay? And I'm taking a slap shot, and there it is. So, those past feelings or those past moments of holding something different in your hand other than a golf club can help us come up with a better golf swing. At the end of this video, I'm going to give you a great tip that really, really will help you succeed in being coming a better ball striker right away. So what all these things in common have today when I was moving the club back? When I took the bouncing racket back and I moved to this position, it seemed that, that the, the club was moving a little bit more narrower into my body. And then as I moved the club out, it was, my arm was extending. And if I grab the baseball bat, when I'm at the top here, it's, I'm very narrow in my body, and as I come to hit it, I lengthen my arms, and so the bat hits the ball. All right, and again, the same thing happens here when I grab the hockey stick, is that as I move back, I'm very narrow into my body, and I'm not wide. I'm very narrow, and I lengthen it to strike. Again, my belief and my feeling is, is that you want to become a, a better striker of the golf ball and you don't want to practice too, too much, but you want to do something that's more natural for your body. Well, then I suggest that you try using these ideas because it will help your game immensely. Now, let's just say for instance, well, Derek, I've always been taught that the left arm stays straight. I'm not going to disagree. I played golf for 22 years trying to keep my left arm straight on the way back. And on the way down, it was a, it, you know, I was successful at it. But I've realized that if I let my hand narrow, so my arms get narrow at the back, or my left arm is really narrow, or it gets really in tight, and then I release that energy to the ball, I have become more effective. Not have only become more effective, but I was able to actually grab the medicus and use this technique and share this with techniques to other golfers and they don't break it when they move it. They say with this club, if you move it the right way, it doesn't break, you have a pretty good golf swing. So the, 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 the thing that I'm thinking about to a lot of golfers is that what we're trying to create with our hands, because we're holding the club with our hands, is that we move the club back 
and we swing very, very narrow on the way back. Now you might see some golfers like Kenny Perry, um, Fred Couples, uh, Lorena Choa, when she was playing. They were not necessarily really narrow, but they weren't out straight on a right left arm. They were kind of hinging the left arm a little bit, and I believe that it, that was able to create, give them greater speed. So there's, you know, a lot of things that resemble the golf club or the things that we do. Going back to the most important position in the golf swing, my belief again, after the fundamentals, before you start swinging the club, but during the motion of the golf swing, the most important position is impact. So I've, I've put on display here a club and it's kind of an arrow, I call it an arrow or a nail, and it's pointing here. So our goal with the golf club is to get square at the bottom. Now most of my, most of my students become very confused or unaware of the position at the bottom because they're so concerned about body positions and club positions at the top of the swing and during the golf swing. So what I have to do to them is actually change my golf club and modify my golf club just for the, the drill here for a second. As I turn the club, so it's, it, it's, it's pointing towards my target that I want to hit. And I call this a sledgehammer position in my drills. So this club is now in a sledgehammer position. Understanding also that this would be square if my sledgehammer was pointed straight into the club here or the back of the grip here. So understanding also that if I come in the club and my club's like this, that it's not going to be good for this drill. If I come in this position as well, it's not good. So after we clarify those little things with the club, all I want you to do is assume that we're swinging more horizontal or more up in the air, not level with the ground or diagonal yet. We're going to move the club to the back. And I want this natural ability to flow, almost like that baseball position that I was his. I'm nice and tight, and I'm just going to let my arms explode square to the ball here. Here, and square, and I'm square. Okay. And I'm, I continue to practice this nice and slow. You can see that I don't rotate really fast into that ball because it's going to take, it's going to take a lot more work for my hands to square the club up. If I let my hands move the club and do it slow and get to the square position, you can repeat your golf swing very, very effectively and consistently when you, when you apply this drill. I do it slow like this. There's no, see, there's no big turning of the hips. One big benefit that I had for most of my golfers, and you know, we're coming a time and age that where there's a lot of golfers, 45, 50 years and up, that are, are taking up the game today. And when we try to get into this position here, there's a lot of pressure in their back, okay? And they're told to keep that left arm straight, but you know what? It hurts their back a lot. And this golf swing will actually help reduce the stress that's on the back because right here there's no pressure here. There's no pressure at all. So as opposed to going wide and feeling a lot of pressure there, I, I'm relaxing my arms. They're nice and tight, just kind of like a baseball player or even if I had a hockey stick, I'm getting ready to take a slap shot. I'm in this position and I'm bringing the club to impact. As, I, as we continue with this, I'll put the club on the ground. Now I'll practice from a, a more of a golf position. I have my hammer down here. I still have my sledgehammer position. I'm moving my hands back, back to the target, back to the target. Now I'll pretend, I'll take some swings and I'll pretend that I'm hitting my target hard. And you can see that I've had no rotation at all. And my body supported this move very, very well. That's my tip. Um, hope you enjoyed it. Hopefully we can uh, come together again on the Golf Channel and be right in your living room Monday. Thank you.